Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm Catherine DeClerc here with Martha Randazzo and welcome to our webinar on sellers, the five things you must know about the 2023 real estate market. And if you were watching last uh, two weeks ago, when we told you the five things you need to know for everybody, thank you for coming back uh, and joining us again tonight. Selling your home can be a very stressful time for sellers and planning ahead and managing expectations are gonna be critical during this time frame. And it's not too early, you no, know, it's early January, not too early to get started. So I'm very excited to announce in two weeks from now, Tuesday on January 24th, same time, seven o'clock, we're going to have a webinar for buyers, five things buyers should know. Um, everybody wants to wait for the spring market. They think the spring market is April, May, when everything is green and lush. Spring market's in a few weeks. So join us in two weeks, find out what you need to know. I work with a variety of first time home buyers, um, experienced home buyers, and somebody will walk away with information from this webinar. And we are also going to have a guest with us. Our lender friend, Chris Diaz from Hudson United Mortgage is going to be joining us. So he's gonna give you some critical mortgage information that buyers need to know. So you don't wanna miss that. Same link, same time, uh, two weeks from tonight. So we are going to be keeping it real, we're, we're calling it with Catherine and Martha. We're gonna discuss all things real estate and we're starting our monthly series in February. We're gonna answer some commonly asked questions, subjects that will include first time home buyer challenges, title issues that can come up in the course of your transaction, how to avoid them, contract issues that like every client asks about with their attorney. And we're going to have some assorted guests for those webinars as well. So stay tuned. We're going to be doing this monthly, just 30 minutes. And we look forward to bringing you some really helpful information about real estate. And of course, we'll take questions. And if you have any questions from the previous week, we can open it up and answer those questions the following week. So what are the five things that sellers need to know? Well, tonight we're gonna to talk about the fact that prices are expected to be flat. Don't expect double digit multiple offers. We were seeing those 10, 20 offers on a property. We'll talk about what you can expect now. The interest rates are higher. We'll talk about how that's gonna impact you. The terms that offers are containing are changing as well. And we'll also talk about how there's value in a good realtor. So let's get started. Number one, prices are expected to be flat. And we came off of a couple of really hot years with double digit increases. And this year it is slowing down. It's the sky is not falling. That's the important piece. You have to be very careful when you listen to national news, newspapers, if, if people even read newspapers anymore, news, internet news, it's all about selling advertising, sensationalizing things, making the article seem really exciting. And you might hear things like the sky is falling. Well, that's not the case, not what's to be expected. All real estate is local. So when you're listening to news and it's on a national scale, be sure to know what's going on in your market and don't, don't be confused by what might be happening, say, in California or in Florida. So here is the forecast for next year. And this is provided by Dr. Lawrence Yoon, who's the chief economist for the National Association of Realtors. He predicts units, the number of homes sold, will decline by 6.8% compared to 2022. And the median home price for the entire country is going to reach 385,000. And that's an increase of 0.3%. So basically flat. He predicts that half the country may experience small price gains while the other half may see slight declines. He said, however, markets in California may be the exception with San Francisco, for example, 
um, likely to register drops of 10 to 15 percent. So as you're hearing that, just be sure you know where they're talking about that news. So why are prices holding if we're selling less homes? Um, is there less demand? Um, the inventory is still low. That's the important piece that's not reflected on this chart. Um, in 2021, the months of supply went as low as 2.3 months of supply. It's come up a little bit. It's at three, but that is still incredibly low month of supply. So we all know real estate is driven by supply and demand, and that's what keep, what's going to determine our pricing. So the um, demand might be a little lower, but the inventory still is quite low. And if you've heard that it's switched to a buyer's market, um, I don't believe that that's true either. According to Realtor.com, a balanced market is six to seven months of supply. And a buyer's market is seven months of supply or more. A seller's market is six months of supply and under. And we're at three. So we are still very much in a seller's market. The one thing we do have to be concerned about, of course, is affordability. And um, that's something that will affect buyers. And we'll talk about that a little bit more uh, later when we talk about interest rates. So I know sellers don't wanna hear this. They shouldn't expect to see double digit multiple offers. They are starting to fade away. Uh, it's the reality of it. Um, but you have to put it into perspective. So recently in my experience, I did receive multiple offers. So multiple offers still exists. You're just not going to get the 10, 15, 20 offers. Um, it actually gives a seller better time to kind of go through each offer instead of just sitting there and getting 20 offers and just picking whatever offer is the highest. I don't recommend doing that. Um, it also depends on location, quality of the home, and if, for example, if it's in a condo complex, is it the only one in there for sale or is there more competition? So each, it has to really be evaluated case by case. Um, the low end homes, we're still seeing multiple offers. The high end homes, a little bit less. Um, again, it depends on how desirable the home and the area is, but it's okay. We're still seeing multiple offers, just not double digit multiple offers. Right, and it really does depend on the home. So really all you need is one good offer. That's all you need is one buyer. Martha, I just wanna ask you a question. I know I listed a property last week and I have multiple offers on it right now. And I know you happen to be out with a number of um, buyers and sellers through the holidays, which is normally such a slow time. But could you just tell us what were you experiencing? So what I experienced over the holidays, and I thought it was going to be quiet as well, um, it actually has been the complete opposite. I find that anybody who's coming out now is a serious buyer, good terms, good down payments. They want the home. Um, they're eager. They want, to, they want to buy the home, and they're not letting the holidays stop them. They're not waiting for the spring market. Serious buyers are out there. They're still out there. So it's a good time to list. Sure, and the only people who are out this time of year are typically very uh, serious buyers. You don't get browsers in December and January. Browsers come out when the weather's nice. You know, they might be out in April. So you may not see as many, but they will be generally more serious this time of year. And the other thing is you don't have as much competition because if other sellers are waiting until April or May because they think that's the right time, to come on the market, you've got less competition right now. And you know what your competition is. You don't know what it's going to be like in April and May. So you really wanna get ahead of the curve with this and get your home on the market really by February to take advantage of that spring market. Um, one thing that happens, um, not for every home, but for some, sometimes sellers and buyers don't wanna move until the end of the school year. That's not at all unusual. And 
those folks are going to need to be out looking for a home soon because you can't find a home, you know, start your search in June and necessarily expect to find that home and close by August. So they are going to be out earlier. Um, there may even be some sellers who list their homes with the terms that they can't close until June. And there will be buyers, uh, depending on the home, who are willing to wait until then because that also meets uh, their needs. So not at all too early. In fact, the life cycle of the transaction really requires it for them to get out you know, now. And so you, you can't, can't sell if you're not on the market. I think there you really have to trust your agent because a lot of people will say the holidays, I don't want to show the property. You can, there's ways that you can work around showing the property during the holidays. Um, you know, everybody has a holiday, so you can respect their holidays, but really trust your agent because they know the market. Absolutely. So interest rates. As you've heard, interest rates have gone up. Um, you might start seeing some price reductions taking place. They may be needed. Some sellers may have gone out on the high end. We know what happens. They look at other homes that are on the market and they think, well, if you know Joe down the road is asking this, I'm going to list you know higher than that, as opposed to pricing it really to where the market was. If that was the case and they were over, they are going to need to take some price reductions at this time. But homes that are priced right are still selling in very short days on market. With that higher interest rate, um, some things come back into favor called a 2-1 buy down. And as a seller, you might be saying, well, I don't really know, why do I care about what kind of mortgage the buyer's gonna get? Um, but with that higher interest rate, we want to be sure to make the deal attractive for them. And instead of taking a price reduction, sellers could offer money to the buyer to buy down their interest rate. And basically how it works like is like this. Let's say it's a $350,000 loan. A seller could, could spend about $9,000 and reduce the loan interest rate for the first year by two percentage points and then the next year by one percentage point, and then it eventually goes to whatever the interest rate was. It's a 30 year fixed, just like what they want, but it does help them for those first couple of years. And then hopefully the interest rates are down a little bit, and then that buyer could refinance and bring that um, the rest of their 30 years down. So that's an option that a seller can do to help sweeten the pot during these high interest rates. And we have lots of strategies like that to help you. Um, the interest rates, although they're higher, they're historically really not that bad. I know it's hard for some people to get their heads around because we were getting so used to two and 3% for such a long period of time, starting to think that was normal. Take a look over time at where interest rates were. And you'll see all the way over on the right where it shows up in the sixes, that was pretty normal through the heights of the market in 2000 to 2005. This wasn't abnormal. I know my first home, it was 10. Um, and we can see as high as 18% and homes were selling. So I think once people start to realize we've gone back to a more normal interest rate, probably going to calm down over the shock of it from going up. I know it's doubled, but it's not necessarily that bad. Oops. So the terms are changing. What does that mean to sellers? It means that you've probably heard your neighbor down the block got 50,000 over asking, he got the appraisal waived, the home inspection was waived, they decided that they didn't have, the buyer didn't have to sell their home anymore. They were just going to buy it. And the best case scenario for the seller, it's changing. Uh, how is it changing? It's not that bad. It's actually a lot better to go through offers now. Um, because the market was so competitive, they were waiving appraisals. And unfortunately, buyers that were bidding and bidding and never heard the word accepted offer, when they did hear accepted offer, they had to get it by waiving the appraisal, waiving the inspection. 
Um, I don't think clients, buyers fully understood what, a, what waiving an appraisal meant or what waiving the inspection meant. So it would cause problems down the road. Um, now it's, it's different. The terms have changed. So there are less appraisal waivers. You might see an appraisal gap here and there. Um, I am seeing no more inspection waivers, uh, which is actually a good thing because then there's no, everything comes up at the surface from the get-go. Um, a lot of people were doing house, getting rid of their house sale contingencies. Now it's okay. It's okay to select a buyer that has to sell a home because we talked about inventory being so low. It's not risky for a seller to select an offer with somebody who has to sell their home in order to buy yours. It's okay. Um, you know, the terms are changing, but it's really not a bad thing. And I think people have to stop listening to their neighbors because the market is different than it was six months, a year ago. Um, listen to your agent. Yes, that's true. And the other thing was there were lots of buyers who were not able to waive appraisals uh, and they would just lose out. You know, they'd make an offer, they'd never win. Those buyers now are winning. Because although they maybe have a higher degree of financing, they're still very qualified for their loans. Because someone's doing a high degree of financing doesn't make them less qualified. It just means they don't have as big of a down payment. The thing that we're starting to see again, which was not at all happening when we were in that multiple offer situation, is seller concessions. A seller concession would be when the seller is giving monies back to the buyer to help the buyer with their closing costs. So basically what they're doing is they're building the price up. So let's say, you know, a buyer's gonna offer you 400,000 for your home, but they might write the offer up as $410,000 because they're, that, they're gonna borrow more and that $10,000 will go toward their closing costs. The issue with that is that it has to appraise at that higher amount. And here's where the value of your realtor really comes in because they'll be able to guide you and tell you, are we likely for it to appraise? Are there comparable sales out there that would help justify that? So you will start to see seller concessions because nobody was, was asking for them um, during that hot time. I guess it's important to also recognize that not always the highest offer is the best offer. Because if you do get into that appraisal situation, you're going to have that awkward conversation when it doesn't appraise. So really, an educated agent is going to look at the whole package versus the highest dollar amount. Absolutely. Because during that time, it wasn't always the highest offer that won. Many times it was the cash offer and it wasn't necessarily the highest or the one that had the largest down payment. So every offer has to be weighed on its merits. So, um, and lastly, number five, select your realtor wisely. With so much confusion in the market as the market shifts, whether you're buying or selling, you need a realtor with experience who knows how to handle the changing market. A good listing agent will help you determine the appropriate price for your specific home and help with staging and advice on certain things that you might want to address before you put the home on the market. Sometimes small things can add value. Sometimes homeowners want to do things that aren't going to add any value. And that's where your realtor can really help you. We're happy to come in in advance and go through the home with our clients to make sure that they are doing the most to maximize. Um, and oftentimes it's, um, it, it may be very small things, very doable. Remember your agent is a fiduciary and we're obligated to work in our client's best interest to help them achieve their goals. You need and deserve the skilled negotiator who understands the life cycle of the real estate transaction. And they can also help you manage your expectations. I find that when it's stressful, it's because people don't understand the, um, what is, is a normal expectation. Um, unfortunately, we have a lot of TV shows about real estate and people watch those shows and they think that's how real estate goes. And that's not necessarily true, shocker, right? 
So your agent can take you through that process and make sure you understand what to expect every step of the way. So, yeah, right, Martha. I think it's uh, important to also realize that your agent's job doesn't stop once they get your listing. There's a lot that goes into it. Um, and I think you have to pick an agent that is going to market your property aggressively, especially in this changing market. Um, somebody that's going to have to evaluate the offers with you. Um, and I think you want to definitely look for an agent that's good on communicating. No news is not good news. You should be speaking frequently with your clients, with your agents, just weekly updates. Um, and you wanna make sure that they have a rapport within the industry, a uh, social media presence. Um, these are all things to look at when you are interviewing agents. There's lots of articles out there on the internet that you know, how do you pick an agent? And they basically all have these same things. So be sure to read their reviews. I mean, we look at how many stars with everything we buy on Amazon, even if it's paper towels, and we know what the paper towel is going to be like. So we definitely want to take time, read the reviews, and see what other people who've worked with us um, had to say about us and the experience that we had. Some other additional considerations. Um, the availability of the agent. Uh, are they are they working full time in real estate? Are because this is a very difficult business to be in just a day or two a week. So you want to be sure that your agent's going to be available. Uh, as Martha said, you want to be sure they have the social media presence because that's where a lot of information is shared today. The internet is a really important place. You know, it used to be back in the day, newspapers, there's no, really no print advertising anymore. So there's a number of websites, but also the social media and those connections. Um, they have to be able to use today's technology um, because our, our buyers are very likely um, millennials at this point in their 30s, the, the typical age of a home buyer has always been somewhere in their mid 30s, and they basically have that phone at the end of their arm. So we need to be sure that we've got that technology so that we can attract the buyers. Uh, Orange, you also County, Orange County attracts a variety of people from the city, from upstate. So being able to reach them uh, is a huge advantage. Sure. And then the social media presence also will be important that that agent has a large network, especially of other agents. I always say this, it's not my job to get my seller's home sold. My, um, it's, I'm sorry, it's not my job to sell their home. It's my job to get their home sold. There's a difference. There's several thousand other realtors in the marketplace and you want to be able, your agent needs to be able to network with them and make the home attractive and appealing to them so that they wanna show it to their clients. Um, you also need a realtor that has additional resources, lenders, attorneys, contractors. Um, we're like the conductor of the orchestra. We keep you know, everything in line going together, moving you to the closing table and we don't do it alone. There's title work, there's surveys, there's mortgage information that's needed, and you want to be sure that they have an extensive list. A good agent's going to make it seem easy. They know how to avoid the potholes and help you have a smooth transaction. Select wisely because you don't want to wait until it's too late and you're too far into the transaction to realize you made a bad choice. So spend the time up front. Um, when you select your agent and be sure to, um, and you're welcome to reach out to us, we'd be happy to assist you in any way that we can. So if you have any questions, you can go ahead and type them in the chat, or if you're on social media, you can put them there as well. We know we're live on Facebook and this will be posted and shared there. If you have any questions after the fact, Put them there and we will definitely follow up with you or you can reach out to either one of us. Um, here is our contact information and you can scan the QR code by just taking out your phone and scanning it right there on the screen and that will give you both of our digital business cards. So again, my name's Catherine DeClerc. 
I'm associate broker with Howard Hanna Rand Realty, and my uh, partner here is Martha Randazzo, licensed salesperson also with Howard Hanna Rand Realty in Goshen, and we service all of the Hudson Valley. So we want to thank you very much for being with us tonight, and we hope that you'll join us. Um, for our next one, working with buyers, if you also happen to be a buyer or if you know any buyers that would benefit. Same link. We look forward to seeing you then. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night.